Hello, I'm John Lampin, and I'm an editor with the Suburban uh, Daily Herald, or actually a retired editor with the Suburban Daily Herald, and a member of the Illinois Associated Press Media Editors Board. Today is Monday, October 3rd, 2022, and we're about to begin a unique interview with the two major party candidates for the U.S. Senate, a Democratic incumbent Tammy Duckworth of Hoffman Estates and Republican Kathy Salvi of Mundelein. I said this is a unique interview, and it is because for the first time, the Illinois AP Media Editors Association has brought together more than 20 newspapers uh, across the state, representing every region in the state to conduct interviews in some of the top uh, statewide races. Questions for today's interview have been solicited from uh, them, and each news organization plans to post this recording and uh, coverage of, uh, uh, of uh, the interview in their newspapers. I'm joined today on the interview panel by David Bauer, editor and publisher of the Jacksonville Courier Journal, Jake Griffin, deputy managing editor with the Daily Herald, and Brendan Moore, state government editor, our reporter with Lee Newspapers. And uh, Kathy Salvi, we will begin our questioning with you. And uh, that's related to the economy. What's the uh, cause of the inflation that uh, we're experiencing today? How long will it last? What can be done about it? And is a recession in inevitable? And if so, how bad is it going to be? And in particular, the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates five times in the past year. Uh, do you support that action or would you take a different approach? Thank you. And you're right. This is a unique interview, but this is a unique election cycle, too. And I full well, as I've traveled the state to our message resonates with all the voters. Inflation is at a 40 year high and it's because the failed leadership of this president and the rubber stamp of his agenda by our junior Senator Tammy Duckworth, which is a dis disappointment not only for me, but for many Illinoisans. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a grandma. I am a business owner. I make payroll every two weeks and I am a attorney by practice. I'm a committed lifelong Illinoisan. I'm a fifth generation Illinoisan. And I just cannot believe that our state has gone off track as much as it has in the last two years. And this is why I came into the race. Inflation's at a 40 year high because we were energy independent and now we are energy dependent. Both this president and junior Senator Duckworth have waged a war on fossil fuels. When we have an Illinois and in America, uh, we are the Saudi Arabia of natural gas and why that clean um, gas could not be used and exported. So I believe in an all of the above energy policy, which would uh, uh, allow us to drill on fellow uh, federal lands, uh, receive our clean oil and clean coal. We have abundant coal reserves here. We have nuclear energy. We used to be a, in Illinois a 40% nuclear energy exporter, now we're a 40% nuclear energy importer. And this is hurting our businesses here in industry in Illinois. And that is one of the reasons why we have this recession. Secondly, the American Recovery Act, which was passed in March of 2021 uh, by uh, Senator Duckworth and her colleagues, not one Republican vote. Uh, even Larry S Summers, the uh, Obama era treasury secretary said that it was a train wreck. And what did it do? It was a $1.99 trillion printing and spending of money. And that is what has caused the escalation in, our, in the, the cause of our inflation. So you're right. It's not if we're going to get in a recession. We've had two quarters in a row of negative growth, and that is a recession. No matter how you uh, define it, people are suffering here at the gas pump, at the grocery store, and it's all account of the bad policies that are passed by this uh, Biden administration seconded by uh, Tammy Duckworth, who is, I've passed, you probably heard it, Senator Duckworth, I've called you a rubber stamp of this failed agenda, and it's hurting us in Illinois, and that's why I'm in the race. And so I expect full well to be elected this November, principally on that issue. And if I could, before we go to Senator Duckworth, can I ask you about the Fed uh, rate increases? Do you support those? Well, the Fed has to do what, it, the, the purpose of the Fed is to rein in inflation. And so they have been having to drive up interest rates. So I expect that we have some tough, tough times ahead of us. And what we will do this November in, in, in my election, we need to put a check on Joe Biden. He just can't sit at the Oval Office and then legislate with his pen uh, into law, whatever he, uh, 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 whatever he and his uh, uh, socialist uh, uh, leftist agenda uh, seeks and, 
and, and Tammy Duckworth has not shown any leadership for Illinois or for America on any of those issues. And we need to put balance back into Congress and return a, a, a check and balance on the unbridled power, the legislative power that President Biden has exercised for the last two years, which is seriously hurting our country domestically and in foreign affairs as well. Thank you very much, Senator Duckworth. Well, let, let me start off by um, answering your question. Inflation, inflation is a global problem. It's been driven by the pandemic, supply chain issues, the war in Ukraine, uh, the bills that Democrats have passed have uh, uh, been try really focused on working families and trying to make sure that people can make ends meet. I thought the feds acted a little bit too slowly, um, but now they're at a point where they do have to raise interest rates. Um, but let me tell you about the work that, that I've been doing. Um, you know, I've been so proud of the passing the Inflation Reduction Act. It means that hundreds of dollars are gonna be saved for families every year in energy costs. And nearly 60,000 seniors in Illinois alone are gonna see a $2,000 cap on their annual Medicare prescription drug pricing and a $35 a month cap on insulin cost for those families. I'm gonna keep making sure that we lead efforts to rein in big oils, gas pricing, gouging. In fact, I introduced legislation to go after uh, big oil companies who continue to price gouge. My gas price gouging prevention act would, that I introduced this year, would stop big oil from excessively increasing prices of gas, especially during periods of a national emergency like we have in, um, in Florida right now, or in an international incident like what's happening in Ukraine. Um, I think that Illinois is uniquely positioned to not just lead the country but the world when it comes to clean energy and in fact let me tell you i, I was in uh, taiwan and i met with lg industry you know the folks who make um uh, uh, refrigerators and washing machines and the like and what they said to me was tammy we have committed to being a green energy company we're going to be net carbon neutral by 2035 and we're looking for places where we can go to have that abundant energy and also clean energy for the future. And I said, come on to Illinois. We have more nuclear reactors than anywhere else in the country. Uh, we have two crown jewels in terms of national laboratories, Fermilab and Argonne, that is doing research into clean, reusing nuclear fuel. That spent nuclear fuel that we have, we're gonna reuse it, work towards a clean energy future. We created 100,000 new jobs in, in wind power in 10 years. We have clean coal. In fact, I led the effort in, help that get a grant to SIU to look at carbon capture sequestration and to look towards clean coal. Because even if we stop using coal in this country, we're gonna be selling that coal technology to other countries around the world, to China, to India, for example, that are still using coal. And yes, we have fracking, we have oil wells down in Southern Illinois. It's an all of the above approach that's going to put us on the map to attracting other companies, manufacturers to coming to Illinois. Because you know we can provide not just net carbon, neutral, but net carbon negative, especially when it comes to biofuels. I included in the defense budget for this year, a, a provision to really invest in biofuels for the aviation industry. I am super excited that Illinois is going to lead the world, not just now when it comes to energy, but the future and towards that carbon neutral future that is gonna grow our economy here in Illinois, but also grow our economy overseas as well. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, let's switch gears. And um, go in a uh, completely different direction. Uh, President Biden has called the quote unquote MAGA Republicans unquote a threat to democracy. And he says that threat is one of the primary issues in the 2022 campaign. Uh, I'm curious about whether you think his remarks were a bit inflammatory or whether you think that threat is, is uh, accurate. And uh, your thoughts on that. So Senator Duckworth, and we could try to keep this in about 90 seconds. Well, I was in the United States Capitol on January 6th when it was back for the first time since the war of 1812. As a soldier, I spent three years the Constitution was absolutely uh, horrified to see veterans, to see police officers as part of those who attacked our nation's capital and, and ransacked it. Um, what I say is, what I've always said is, I can work with anyone who loves this country as much as I love this country. And I was willing to lay down my life to defend this country. If you love this country as much as I do, we can work together. And if you look at my, at my background, you'll see that I passed the first piece of legislation uh, faster than anybody in, in sitting 
history in, in the United States Senate since the 1970s at the 64 day mark. And that was bipartisan. I was with Todd Young, Indiana, looking at a practical problem, infrastructure projects. I continue to be very bipartisan in the work that I do. Um, so I can work with anybody um, and I'm willing to work with anybody. But those who would defend the actions on January 6th, I have a problem with because my DNA is to protect and defend this, this, this country. And I can't support someone who agrees that, who, who will not agree that uh, what happened on January 6th in the nation's capital uh, was destructive to our country, because it was. You know, I was gonna do that. Kathy Salvi, I'd like to ask the same question of you, but I'd like to uh, construct it in a little bit different way. As far as I'm aware, two of your opponents in the Republican primary have yet to concede to you. Uh, Peggy Hubbard has said that the nomination was stolen. Uh, uh, Bobby Python said the primary was rigged. Uh, both have uh, called for audits of the outcome. Uh, as far as I can see, I, I don't think they have offer, offered concrete evidence. Does this affect your perspective on the conspiracy theories that seem to be running rampant about our election integrity? And uh, uh, beyond your, your uh, response to President Biden's uh, characterization of MAGA Republicans, is President Biden our duly elected president? So I wanna spend uh, a few seconds of this answer responding to Senator Duckworth's last answer. She, like many Dems, Democrat people, uh, folks, and it's the talking points for the Dem party, blame Putin, uh, Ukraine war, and uh, uh, oil price gouging on the cause of the current uh, 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 the current uh, uh, economic trouble that we face in America. But in reality, the failed, uh, the so-called Inflation Reduction Act that she passed, which I would not have voted for, will not in fact reduce inflation. It will in fact decrease American competitiveness and it will overburden uh, small business here in Illinois and the taxpayer, the mom and pop middle, uh, middle average American average Illinois taxpayer who earns 200,000 or less a year. 75% of the new taxes to save the economy are intended to come from those earning 200,000 or less. This is an attack on the middle class. And uh, she, she mentions nothing about what really is plaguing, that is the war on fossil fuels and the war on um, uh, our energy independence, which is the primary driver of our inflation today. And as to the great question that you asked, you know, Voters, Republican, Democrat, all people of goodwill want honest and fair elections. Uh, elections where every honest vote is counted and every cheat is discovered. And I'm happy to say that the coalition that I have built uh, for my uh, election is um, uh, uh, a winning coalition of all Republicans, independents, and open-minded Democrats. And let me say first front, Joe Biden won the election in November, 2020, but people have the right, should have the right to ask questions and peacefully protest. But those who break the law should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And I think that this here on, uh, uh, in this election cycle is really principally, our economy is in the tank, crime is raging in our streets. And this, these are the two principal issues that people are concerned about. Uh, and I'm happy to say that I'm gathering the support of uh, all of the people who uh, supported other candidates. I believe just recently, uh, Jimmy Lee Tillman is on board and uh, will be working for me. But uh, as to all of the, I know what it's like to uh, lose an election. I did 16 years ago and I jumped on board my opponent's uh, campaign and helped him in his general election uh, uh, effort. And this is what I'm seeing all around the state. Uh, Republicans united, independents coming on board to a great degree, and open-minded Democrats who are happy to support my candidacy. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Candidate Sally, this uh, question goes to you first. Chicago has been receiving unprocessed immigrants sent by the governor of Texas, largely as a protest to what he sees as the administration's inability or unwillingness to control our southern border. Is there a crisis at the border? And if so, what needs to be done to address it? Uh, there is absolutely a crisis at the border. And I'd like to put this question to uh, Senator Duckworth. Does she 
agree with Vice President Kamala Harris that the border is secure? Or does she agree that we have a humanitarian crisis at our border with unprecedented human trafficking, death, and fentanyl coming across the border from China that is killing? It's the principal reason that our, our uh, young people aged 18 to 36 are dying uh, every day. 100,000 people last year died of fentanyl, a uh, uh, drug that comes over our southern border. And uh, we, we've only seen in these past in this past month a taste of what they're dealing with down at the southern border every day. It's a crisis. And this will be one of the principal, uh, fo my principal focuses once elected to the United States Senate. Thank you. Uh, Senator Duckworth, the same question to you. That, um, no one can deny that our immigration system is completely broken and that there is a crisis at the border. We, but in order to fix that, we need immigration reform that is practical, humane, and fair. Those are the three things that have always governed uh, uh, how I make decisions and what bills I support on this issue. You know, we need a fair, earned pathway to citizenship and also stronger border security. Not too long ago, we had a solution that passed the Senate by 67 votes that included significant dollars for border security. We need more border. Uh, patrol agents. There's not enough of them. They are stretched thin. They don't have all the equipment that they need. We need to provide them with both physical barriers where it's appropriate, uh, but also electronic barriers and electronic monitoring, drones and the like. We have to make a significant investment in our border to support our border patrol agents. We're out there doing that really tireless, honorable, hard work every single day that is devastating every single day. Um, but in order to get to that, we have to have a compromise. We have to work together and make those investments. But then we also need to make sure that our solutions are practical. Building a wall from sea to shining sea is not a practical solution. Telling 11 million undocumented people in this country to, you know, just turn themselves in and, and, and go and, and, and self-deport, that's not practical. What is practical? A common sense reform that ends up with a pathway that people can become legal again. Uh, I think we should be looking at a guest worker program. When I talk to folks in the ag sector in this, in our state, when I talk to farmers and, and dairy farmers and, and corn growers and soybean growers and orchards down in far Southern Illinois, you know, uh, they tell me they need agricultural workers. Those workers should be getting a worker visa that they can come in, work, pay their taxes, then go back home so that they don't have to sneak across the border and become victim uh, to uh, traffickers. Uh, we also need more H-1B visas so that those more highly educated workers can come here and stay here and, and, and grow in our economy instead of having to go back home where they start businesses to compete against American businesses. That's not good for us. Um, so it's got to be practical. It's got to be fair. You know, you, if you broke the laws to come here, you need to pay fees, fines, penalties. You need to learn English. Go to the end of the line. Um, and, 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 and work your way towards a, a pathway to legal status. In fact, I am in right now a bill um, that, would, uh, that would allow uh, those who came here on immigrant visas and DACA, um, DACA children to serve in the United States military. And then after one full term of enlistment, which is about five years, if they serve honorably, they get a green card that becomes permanent. At the end of that time, they get to go to the end of the line and wait out their time and apply for citizenship like everyone else. I can't think of a better way to prove that you want to be a citizen of this great country other than to wear the uniform, wear her cloth, wear her colors, <coughs> learn to defend her with your own life if necessary. We need to be fair. We need to be practical. We also need to be humane. When you have unfair policies and unpractical policies, you end up with inhumane practices like what's happening at the border right now, or even during the Trump administration, where we had babies being ripped away from their mother's arms. I remember talking to Secretary Kelly during the Trump administration and saying, are you really gonna separate children from families at the border? And he said, what about breastfeeding children? He said, that sounds like good deterrent to me. Um, so that is inhumane and that's certainly not the American way. As we move forward, when it comes to immigration reform, here's what you can count on me to do. Is it going to be humane? And is it going to be fair? And if we keep those things, the three things in mind and work together, we can get to a solution, just like we did once upon a time when there were 67 votes on the Senate floor for a bill that it had increased border security, increased funding for our agents on the border, but also a practical way forward. I'm hoping to 
should be my next term. Okay, th thank you, Senator. And you, and you kind of touched upon the, the next portion of that question that I had, uh, which is kind of two parts. One is how do we then arrive at a widely supported common sense approach? And do you think that it's fair that places uh, that might not agree with Chicago and Cook County's sanctuary status, uh, that it's okay for the, that city to basically flaunt federal law? You mean for, for like for Chicago? Yes. Well, I, I think what we have to do is we have to be humane, right? I mean, we, we as a state also issue driver's licenses for those who are, are, are undocumented as well. I think this is the humanity piece of it. We have to understand that until we have comprehensive immigration reform, people are stuck. Um, but I do think there is a way forward. And, and this is where I think moving away from the orthodoxy of a single large bill is important. It's why I introduced my Enlist Act, this bill that, that gets at those who've overstayed the immigrant visas, those who are in temporary stat, um, protected status, and dreamers to give them a way to move forward. And, and I am getting bipartisan support for that. Um, when, we, when we go back to Washington um, after the election, you're gonna see that bill move forward. Um, and, and hopefully um, I'm very close to uh, getting it be part of the defense budget. Um, and that is going to be the first move forward so that here's a way forward that's practical, that's fair, that's humane. And then we apply that to everything else. And all along, we still have to remember we need to have security at the border. Listen, I, I, my whole life has been spent protecting and defending this country, which means that whatever I do, I'm gonna keep border security as part of the process. But then again, we need to find a way forward. As for the, the, this political stunt of sending folks from Texas to Illinois or from Texas to uh, Martha's Vineyard, that's inhumane, that's taking advantage of people. And, and it's simply not the American way. Um, I do think that those, state, those states, those cities like Chicago, Illinois, are doing the best that we can in a humane way in a broken system. So the first thing we need to do, fix a broken system. And then we can deal with, and then, and then states like Illinois won't have to do what we're doing, which is, which is to you know, provide, provide aid and comfort and to provide uh, 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 things like driver's licenses to those who are stuck. We're just being realistic here. Okay, thank you. Candidate, Candidate Salvi, your views on the, the sanctuary community designations and, and also what do you think needs to be done to secure the border and also to arrive at some sort of common sense policy that is humane, rational and widely supported? First of all, uh, I listened to everything Senator Duckworth had to say and nothing in what she said admits to a crisis at our border. Three million people have already crossed the border since President Biden took office. This is our humanitarian crisis. And what have we heard? Crickets, nothing. In fact, I have a list of bills here that would have, could have secured our border had Senator Duckworth voted the correct way, and she didn't. In at least a couple dozen bills, I could speak about the most recent in August, where before voting for 87,000 new IRS agents, she voted against a bill that it would have allowed 18,000 more additional border, border patrol agents there. She voted against the bill that the border patrol agents are heroes at our border, attempting to secure the border. Uh, they wanted an additional $300 million for anti-narcotic and opioid activities that they were uh, down there at the border to help them. And she voted against that. She has voted on every single point with the radical left and the, the Biden uh, administration, which is an open border policy. So we can't do anything, anything to humanely help the uh, poor, the folks coming over, of course they want a taste of the, Amer the wonderful American life that we have. Just imagine where they're playing in. You can't blame the illegal border crossers for this crisis. They just wanted a chance at the American dream. But we can't even begin to look at a, a humane approach until we do something to secure our Southern border. And I suggest that we would give the Custom and Border Patrol people what they want. They want the policies of the prior administration. 
And they, there was a humane approach to entry into our country back then. And we should, we should consider reinstituting some of those policies. Just because something comes from a party not your own doesn't mean that it's all bad. And I, I think that what has happened with this administration is that too often a Democrat will say, is that a Republican bill? I'm not voting for it. They won't even read it. And this is why I'm excited about what I could bring to the US Senate because everybody thinks that Congress is broken. They're, right now, Congress is not a check on the, the arbitrary power of President Biden. And people want our country in it. We wanna restore trust and faith in the wonderful institution that we have, this one of a kind amazing America that we have. And that's why I, as the next U.S. Senator, I'm not a divider, I'm not a blame caller, but I'll call something out and I'll ask the right questions. But if a Democrat has a great bill, I'll, I'll come on board and I'll support it if it's in the interests of the people and businesses of Illinois. That's just how I've looked at problems my entire life. We need to shake things up a little bit and bring some common sense to Washington, D.C. And you know what? Illinois has always sent a Republican and a Democrat U.S. Senator to to Washington. And this is very healthy for our democracy. And I think that I'm just the right person for this time. So I ask the listening audience here to give me a chance to lead us. I am so anxious and I promise you I'll be the hardest working US Senator that we've sent to Washington DC. Not a blamer, I'll work with both sides and I'll find solutions to the myriad of problems that we have, whether they be at the Southern border or with the immigration policy. And, and by the way, Senator Duckworth had 10 years in Congress to try to figure out that problem. I haven't seen any proposal that she's admitted to or tried to pass that's worked. So we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't uh, reward her with re-election when she's showed failed leadership for the good people and businesses and families of Illinois. So I'd say, give me a chance to lead. Vote Kathy Selby for the United States Senate. I'm gonna make my pitch right now and ask everybody listening today to vote for me for a United States Senate. Send me to Washington for work for you, to work for you. Thanks. Was I on mute? I no, 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 we're waiting. Uh, Brendan was gonna. Uh, oh, I, I, hope I, was, I hope I didn't just say that and somebody had to read my lips. And <laughs> Did no, you okay. no, we, we heard everything. Brendan was uh, gonna jump in with a question. And I don't know if. If uh, Brendan is there, there you are. I'm, I'm right here. All right, thank you, John. All right, we're going to turn to the topic of abortion. Uh, Senator, we'll start with you. Uh, what is your view on congressional efforts to codify abortion rights into federal law? And also, should Congress repeal the Hyde Amendment? And please try to keep it to about 90 seconds. Sure. Um, well, let me just make it clear. Kathy Salby has never been shy about her dangerous anti-choice views on abortion. She wants to rip freedom away from women, something Illinoisans have made loud and clear that they support. Uh, she does not uh, support access to abortion, even in cases of rape, incest, or for the life of the mother. I support Roe v. Wade. I would vote for codifying Roe v. Wade into law um, and making sure that women have the right to make decisions about their own reproductive choice. Right now, there's a national abortion ban that's on the ballot this November. Um, she's made it clear that she's set on taking Illinois women's freedom and their over their own health care away from them. Uh, uh, you know, we, we have right now a national abortion ban uh, bill that was introduced that would end the right to access to abortion at 15 weeks. Um, I don't think that, that's, that that is where the American people are. That's certainly not where American women are in Illinois. Um, you know, I support voting for a bill for women's access to reproductive choice that would follow along with Roe v. Wade, including the Roe v. Wade restrictions. Um, and then I also think that bottom line, we don't need politicians coming in between a woman and her doctor and making those decisions. What's really important about the, the Dobb decision that the Supreme Court passed is that it was also about our privacy rights to bodily autonomy. So it's about abortion, but it's also about women's access to contraception. It is also about the access of women like myself who used IVF to have access to IVF. Um, and so a lot is on the line when it comes to abortion and abortion access. Um, and let me just make clear, it clear, Kathy Salvi has been very clear for years. She has sit, touted her dangerous views on abortion. 
leaving no exception for rape, for incest, or to protect the life of the mother. In fact, she even described an abortion after rape as, and I quote, adding insult to injury. So if she's so hell bent on taking this freedom away from women, where will she stop? Will she go after IVF? Will she join Republicans in going after same-sex marriage and birth control? Because that was also part of the Dobbs decision. Illinoisans deserve to know what the folks on this ballot in November support. And let me be clear, I support codifying Roe v. Wade, Kathy Salvi, to take away a woman's right to abortion and with no exceptions, rape, incest, or the life of the mother. And, and just to follow up very quickly, uh, your position on repealing the Hyde Amendment? I do support repealing the Hyde Amendment because military women and, and women who serve this country do not have the option of deciding where they go to serve. Uh, we have, for example, the Hyde Amendment has made military women who are victims of military sexual trauma in places like Kuwait have to fly on their own dime all the way back to Germany, go on to the economy to access abortion as a result of that rape. Uh, the Hyde Amendment means that women who serve in the Peace Corps who are raped, and we had this case in Africa where some Peace Corps women were raped by their Peace Corps supervisor and they did not have access to abortions that came up there for the pregnancies that came up about as a result of that. So yes, I support repealing the Hyde Amendment. Uh, same question to Kathy, Kathy Salvi. Happy to answer it. And I was happy, uh, Senator Duckworth, that you used my name so often. I think I counted 10 times there in that answer. I am pro-life, but just as importantly, I am pro-woman. I have spent my entire life committed to helping women who face crisis pregnancies. In fact, my life's work is a direct contrast to Senator Duckworth's. Senator Duckworth supports taxpayer-funded abortion on demand up through the ninth month of pregnancy. I would say that there isn't an abortion that she doesn't support. In fact, she supports abortion almost in every instance. She supports the abortion of special needs children. And as the mother of a special needs son, that really hits home to me. She even supports abortion being provided by individuals who are not licensed physicians. One of my first cases as an attorney was to represent a family of a young lady who bled to death in the front seat of her family's car from a so-called safe and legal abortion. And I was able to bring justice to that family. So I think that there's only one person who's an extremist on this issue and it's Senator Duckworth. I have seen the pain of women who've come to me who've suffered abortion. And you know, 80% of Americans agree with me. In fact, I think it was an AP poll, your own, uh, your own paper's poll that was published in the early part of this year that revealed that over 80% of Americans and Illinoisans repudiate nine month elective abortion on demand taxpayer funded. And so I am with the mainstream of women on this issue. And I'd like to hear from Senator Duckworth and is she willing to tell us what abortion she wouldn't find acceptable? Because I think that uh, we should all be able to hear her answer uh, well, to that question. Ms. Salvi, I could please follow up. Uh, uh, your, but what would your position be on, on uh, codifying abortion rights in the federal law if that came before the Senate? I support, I, I support uh, the uh, majority position in the most recent Supreme Court decision. And I believe that uh, it's rightfully in the hands of states elected representatives. And I am uh, uh, very much opposed to activist judges who legislate from the bench. I believe that the role of the Supreme Court is to interpret the United States Constitution and apply it to the laws that are passed by Congress. And I think that that is, a, uh, that is the, the, uh, the Supreme Court. We need to uh, uh, make sure that we appoint Supreme Court justices who will do just that. So, so just to be clear, though, if a bill came up for a vote in the Senate, uh, whether it's the Lindsey Graham bill that would uh, ban abortion nationwide every 15 weeks or some other bill, uh, you would vote no because you believe in states' rights. I believe that the states duly elected uh, representatives rightly will pass the laws uh, that are appropriate for those particular states. 
And then just one very, very quick follow-up for Senator Duckworth. Uh, Illinois limits elective abortion after viability, which is generally considered about 24 weeks. Uh, it can only be done afterwards to protect the life and health of a mother. Uh, do you support that standard? Uh, and is there any, uh, any role for the government to uh, regulate, restrict abortion? There is a role for government to restrict abortion, and I support the, vi the uh, viability limit. Um, again, now it's the same limit both in the Illinois law as well as in the Roe v. Wade decision, which is approximately 24 weeks. Um, but I, I just want to make it clear that uh, Ms. Salvi has misstated my position. So I would just say it again. I support uh, act, women's access to abortion under the Roe v. Wade with the Roe v. Wade restrictions, which is at viability, which is also the same as uh, uh, under Illinois law. Um, but Ms. Salvi has also been very clear throughout her time uh, running for office that she does not support access to abortion, um, even for cases of rape, incest, or the life of the mother. She did not answer your question about whether or not she would vote yes or no on the Lindsey Graham bill. I think the Illinois people deserve to hear from her whether she would vote or no on the bill. Uh, uh, if she were to go to the Senate, the, the American people need to know that. And the, the statistic is that actually the majority of Americans support a woman's right to make her own decisions about abortion between herself and her doctor with the with the 24 week viability uh, restriction. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Kathy Salvi, uh, I'm not sure if uh, you answered the question about whether you would vote in favor of Lindsey Graham's bill. You reiterated that you believe it's a state rights thing, but if the issue came before it, would you vote against it? I think that. Uh... I answered it previously that I think that it's properly in the hands of the state's duly elected representatives. And I think that uh, uh, there's only one person here with a record on abortion, and it's Senator Duckworth. And every single opportunity she had to protect women's health and to regulate to protect women's health, she voted against. And as to nine-month elective abortion taxpayer-funded, that's the position that she has even in the cases of sex selection. She even voted against the um, uh, Born Alive Infant Protection Act, that if a child is born alive in the last trimester and is capable of being saved, she voted against saving that unborn baby. Uh, and and, and I, I can only imagine what happens to that child. Are they wrapped up and put on a shelf? Uh, just because the, this, is, this is reprehensible. I have, I have before me here, I won't even tick them off, but there's you know, three pages of bills and amendments to bills that you had an opportunity to vote on to protect women, women, women's health. And you voted against women every single time. I will not do that as the next United States Senator, I promise you. We'd like to move on. I know Jake's got another question, but I wanna give Senator Duckworth uh, just time for briefly respond to that and then we'll go to Jake. Thank you. Well, voting for the Women's uh, Access to Reproductive Choice Act um, is voting for women's uh, health. Uh, I also introduced the MAMA Act. You know, we are going through a major maternity mortality crisis in this country right now. We're the only developed country where maternal mortality is increasing, especially among Black and Brown communities. It's a bill that I've been working on with uh, Congresswoman Underwood uh, to make sure that we address this issue. Um, I just want to say that Ms. Salvi did not answer your question of where she would vote yes or no on the Lindsey Graham or, a national, or some other national abortion ban bill. And I want to reiterate my position. I support Roe v. Wade being codified into law with its restrictions at the point of viability, which is consistent with Illinois state law, which is about 24 weeks. But as someone who was, went through IVF and struggled to have my two girls uh, and as someone who has watched women come from as far away as Texas to Illinois just to access contraception, they're looking for IUDs, uh, who are fearful that they cannot get the health care that they need in their states. I am terrified that Ms. Salvi, were she to go to the Senate, would take away those rights from women. And she's made it clear she does not support access to abortion, even in the cases of rape, incest, or to protect the life of the mother. Um, and, and this means that there are consequences for military women who are victims of military sexual assault. There is consequences for children who are the victims of rape or incest. 
there are consequences for poor women who are uh, faced with not being able to access contraception. Uh, there are consequences for women who are right now facing cancer treatment but can't get access to an abortion so that they can have their cancer treated. This is inhumane. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to uh, uh, Jake Griffin has a question. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, Senator, this is for you first, and then uh, Ms. Salvi, you can respond afterwards. Uh, all of us have been stunned by the mass shooting last summer in Highland Park. Um, what what must be done to curtail the volume of these random acts of violence? Should Congress vote to reinstate the National Assault Weapons Ban? And beyond that, what else must be done? Yeah, so I, I look at the problem of increasing gun violence in this country from a lens of, of sort of looking at the larger drilling down to a very specific solution. The larger is we need to support our police forces. Our law enforcement officers deserve the support that they need. It's why I voted for the Bipartisan Safer Act, which was a piece of legislation that came about as a result um, following the Uvalde massacre of those poor babies. Um, and so in that bill, there's significant dollars in it that goes to law enforcement uh, so that they can have the resources that they need, hire more officers, train more officers, have the equipment. There's money in that for schools to make schools uh, safer as well. I also voted for the American Rescue Plan, which sent more money to municipalities, and, and that includes money into um, police offices and uh, law enforcement as well. That is, that is critically important. The next thing that I look at is supporting our law enforcement officers themselves. One of my constituents, uh, 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 the widow of Officer Smith, who was there on January 6th, um, found out that she lost all of her benefits um, when her husband died by suicide, a few weeks after protecting the United States. Um, and it turns out that uh, the police, I'm sorry, there's, there's feedback in the background. I think everyone should probably- Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Ms. Salvi, can you mute your- Phone, there's a lot of, we're getting a lot of reverb from whatever's going on in your room. So can you mute until it's your turn to speak? The second thing I would look at is um, um, supporting the officers and their families themselves. In the case of Officer Smith, uh, uh, his wife found out that she'd lost all benefits standing in line at CVS trying to get a prescription filled. So I passed the Public Service Officer Benefits Act. And I did that with Senator Cornyn, the assistant Republican leader to make sure that our police officers are frontline uh, responders who die by suicide or who develop post-traumatic stress, have that post-traumatic stress be presumed to have been from their service protecting and defend us, defending us. And this came from my work on veterans issues where the DOD now 20 years after the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan began, realized that we need to presume that when a soldier develops post-traumatic stress or post-traumatic stress disorder, it is as a result of their military service. We need to extend that same uh, protection to our law enforcement officers so that they themselves can get the help that they need, but also their family members as well. And so I passed that bill um, this year with Senator Cornyn. And then finally, we need sensible gun control legislation. Yes, I would vote to reinstate the assault weapons ban. One of the things that I've heard, whether it was visiting uh, Dallas after the Dallas shootings, whether it was in, the, uh, in Highland Park in the Emergency Operations Center on July 4th, whether it has been working with police officers in Chicago, uh, with folks in police officers in Rockford, what they tell me is the most common denominator in mass shootings is an assault weapon and a high capacity magazine. It is beyond time that we reinstate the assault weapons ban and include in it a ban on high capacity magazine. I carried an M16 for 23 years in the military. I know what those weapons are supposed to do. They're supposed to shred a human body. They don't belong on the streets of our cities. They don't belong on the streets of our main streets. They don't belong anywhere in America other than in the hands of our military members and those who are authorized to carry them. Ms. Salvi has an A rating from the NRA. She will never vote for a ban on assault weapons. Thank you, Senator. Ms. Salvi? You can hear me now? Okay. Well, the, you know, third, Highland Park is 30 minutes from my home. I have dear friends and extended family there. In fact, on the day of that horrible event, which is etched in our memory, I had a couple blocks back, a group of supporters walking in that parade while I was in the Niles parade at the time. 
And they came uh, soon after they sheltered in place. We spent the evening together and they shared their personal story. And, and that, um, that community will never be the same as a consequence. And uh, I believe that what we have in our, in our state, in our country is a mental health crisis. Uh, it, it, is, it was glaringly evident in that day. And one thing I did in 2018 was I applied for and undertook a course in mental health uh, training, a certified course through the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And the reason I did that is because a, as a practicing attorney, I deal with individuals who are struggling to uh, live with their mental illness, either um, transitory or chronic, and families whose uh, family members also suffer. And I think that this is one of uh, the principal things I would like to bring to office as the next United States Senator. We need to shine a spotlight on, on what is happening to treat and to identify mental illness in our schools, in our communities, and so that those who suffer from a mental illness will be able to live with it. For instance, you don't say, I am Bipolar, you say, I live with bipolar. There's a way, a language we could use that we could remove the stigma and this will be healthy and needed for many of our communities. And certainly um, uh, uh, I would like to bring the resources to, to, bat, to, to allow communities and schools to be able to have the um, attention put on mental illness. But I remind Senator Duckworth of her words right after that tragic event. In fact, I was really taken aback. I just find it repulsive when uh, elected officials use a time of tragedy in order to push a particular uh, 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 political agenda. And uh, I, I think that what we need to do is unpeel the onion. We have to do what we can to help communities heal from these tragedies. And this is what I expect to do as the next United States Senator. But, but I will count, I think it was uh, Senator Duckworth, you yourself said that had the newly implemented laws that were passed by the US Senate short time before that tragic event occurred, had they been implemented, that that event would have never uh, occurred in the first place. So I think that before we consider passing any new and additional laws, we should let the laws that are on the book be implemented and, uh, and employed. And there, there again gets to the violence that we see on the streets of Chicago. Uh, uh, Senator Duckworth endorsed Mayor Lori Lightfoot and Kim Fox, who aren't enforcing the law. In fact, they're undermining the, the effectiveness of our law enforcement in the city of Chicago. And now with the new to be um, uh, implemented and passed Safety Act in the, in the state of Illinois, that's going to uh, transplant all the troubles that we've faced in the, the dangerous streets of Chicago to the entire state of Illinois, cashless bail. Uh, emptying our um, prisons and our jails of certain people who committed serious offenses. This is a train wreck for Illinois, and it just shows how out of touch Senator Duckworth is on issues of law enforcement. And I might add, I received the unanimous endorsement of the Illinois Federation of Police because police have lowest morale, and her efforts and votes in the United States Senate to defund the police are the direct cause of what we see today in the dangerous, beautiful. I love Chicago. I, it's, it's my town and we have a beautiful metropolitan area and I hate to see what's happening to it. And it's all because of poor government. So what we need to do is restore safety to our streets. We need to tackle crime by giving those who are trying to protect the communities, the ability to protect themselves. And I think that Senator Duckworth's and this president's policies, which she rubber stamps, have been a train wreck for Illinois. Um, you did not answer the question about whether you would support uh, reinstituting the assault weapons ban. I indicated that I would not. I, let's let the newly passed laws that are on the books work. Let our law enforcement charge people who commit the crimes and let our prosecutors prosecute those offenders. But what we have a problem here is we have a, 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 a US Senator and Senator Duckworth could talk about humanity all she wants, but the results are the people in Illinois, the, the families of Illinois, we're all struggling with the policies, the failed leadership that she's given us for the last six years. And you know, we had so much promise for her when she was elected, but 10 years in Congress, she answers to the 
far left voice of her party rather than to the people and families and businesses of this state. And I would love to see Illinois be a state where people are proud to live in. And the only thing holding us back in this state is poor single party government. And it's hurting, it's crushing us here. So I ask the voters again, consider voting for me, Kathy Salvi, and just give me a chance to lead, to serve all of us. Right. Thank you. And related to um, uh, crime, there's a growing concern about the level of uh, violent crime. What do you think can be done to make America safer and, and to feel safer? Um, Ms. Salvi, you can go first and then uh, Senator, you can follow. You know, I served for a period of time as assistant public defender in Lake County, Illinois. And I was an appellate court clerk and I, I, I handled many different appeals of, and, and uh, was pulled at the heartstring of some people who were uh, uh, unfairly prosecuted. So I do see where there needs to be fairness and change in the system, but you don't handcuff our police officers who are uh, who, who the certain commun communities and all over across Illinois um, look to to provide safety. And that's what we've done with some of the policies that Senator Duckworth and, and President Biden have passed. Look at some of the appointments that we have had to, to federal offices. It has crippled uh, our state. We need to let our law enforcement do their job. And as I've heard from many in serving in law enforcement, my two brothers, uh, my, my, uh, my uh, two, two brothers who serve with the Lake County Sheriff's Office, my uh, son-in-law who's a, a, a sheriff with Naples police dealing with the post Ian uh, hurricane recovery. What we need to do is we need to let them do what they learned in the academy. And they're, they're, to, and they're accountable, let them, let them uh, charge, those who are committing serious crimes and let the prosecutors, no soft on crime prosecutors, we need to let them do their job and be sure to put the people behind bars who are, are destroying the peace and, and threatening the lives and, of so many. I would love to see Il, uh, Chicago not be the murder capital of, uh, of the nation or at least maybe first or second competing for it. I would love to see it a place where families who live here, I, we all love Chicago, can feel safe. But Doug, Thank you. Thank you. But Senator, can you I just, can briefly? I just no, we, we're, we're running out of time. I, we're running out of time. I'd like to get to some other questions before we go. Senator, can you uh, talk about violent crime and what needs to be done to curb it? Yes. Uh, first off, we need to support our law enforcement departments and agencies so that they have the resources that they need to do their jobs which is why I uh, voted for the American Rescue Plan and uh, the SAFER Act, which provides more resources to our agencies. We need to have better cross-agency uh, uh, sharing of information. That's, that uh, provision was part of the SAFER Act, and I'm very really pleased to do that, where the databases do not um, often share information. A good example is the Aurora, Illinois shooter, where he had applied for a full carry uh, uh, and, uh, permit, but he had... Uh, but it wasn't shared across information in terms of the FBI to the Illinois State Police. So that information sharing across agencies need to be uh, better, better coordinated and better resourced. We need to support our individual law enforcement officers, which is why I passed uh, uh, the Public Service Officer Support Act in a bipartisan way. We need to pass a ban on assault weapons. I'm making that this clear. I've answered this question now. My opponent has not answered that question. She has an A rating from the NRA. She would never vote on an assault weapons ban. Uh, we need an assault weapons ban plus a ban on high capacity magazines. These weapons do not belong on the streets of our cities. Um, I also think that we need to have a national FOID card. Uh, Illinois has a FOID card system. I introduced a bill to introduce a national FOID card so that you, you, know, you, you have to have a driver's license to drive a car, you have to have insurance to drive a car, but yet there's no national FOID card system. I think that that's an important way that we can move forward as well. Um, in the SAFER Act that I voted for, we finally made straw purchasers illegal. I'm proud of that fact. I'm proud that I voted for that. That is one of the problems plaguing Chicago. Up until recently, straw purchasers were not illegal. You could go down to Kentucky, you could go down, go out to Indiana, you buy all the guns you want, stick it in the trunk of your car, drive into Rockford, drive into Decatur, drive into Chicago, and sell them on the streets um, uh, as private sales. We're, I'm glad that we put a stop to that. There's much more that can be done. First and foremost, fund police uh, uh, um, forces, support our public service officers, let's recruit more of them. 
um, and an assault weapons ban. And as part of that assault weapons ban, banning high capacity magazines as well. All right, we're gonna turn very quickly to the topic of climate change. Uh, according to the 2017 U.S. Climate Science Special Report, if yearly greenhouse gas emissions continue to increase rapidly as they have by 2000, models project that by the end of the century, global temperature will be at least five degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the first half of the 20th century. And even if annual emissions increase more slowly and decline by 2050, models project that we'd still be about 2.4 degrees warmer. It's scientific consensus that human activities are a significant cause of climate change. Do you agree? Would you characterize this? And would you characterize this as a climate crisis? And then even more importantly, what needs to be done to address it? Uh, we'll uh, go with Senator Duckworth first. Please keep it to about 90 seconds. Yes, I do agree that um, we are in a climate crisis. Um, one of the things that I've already done uh, to work towards uh, solving the climate crisis was voting for the Inflation Reduction Act which puts us, the United States, on track to be at the 40% emissions level that we, ex that we had in 2004. Um, uh, and, and that is a good plan to move forward. Within that act, I protected $500 million to be invested in biofuels, and specifically to make sure that we continue to make investments in biodiesel uh, as well as ethanol and moving those energies towards being carbon neutral and net carbon negative, especially in aviation fuels. And I'm really proud because we have this climate crisis is also an opportunity for the future of this country and the future of Illinois in particular. Um, uh, we here are uniquely positioned to provide net carbon neutral and net carbon negative. Once um, we can get to net carbon negative, for example, uh, LG Industries has signed a deal with ADM, in, with ADM in Decatur, and I was championing that in my two trips to Taiwan this past year, um, because what they're going to do is they're going to develop bioplastics as a, re, as a way to use up the waste from ethanol production, which will make the production of ethanol in Illinois for the first time net carbon negative. That's going to attract industry to Illinois. That's going to put us on the forefront of green energies for the future. I also brought money into Southern Illinois University for research into carbon capture sequestration. Um, Marquis Energy uh, in Illinois is actually drilling a well down into the limestone that's about 5,000 feet below the bedrock of the state to carbon capture. That'll make their ethanol production net carbon negative. Again, we're gonna attract industries from around the world. We're gonna develop the clean coal technology the carbon sequestration technology, sell that to those countries that are still using coal while we bring down um, uh, energy, uh, carbon emissions in the, in the world, and at the same time, attract new industries, specifically to Illinois because of our nuclear, because we're, we're going to develop new uses for that spent nuclear fuel. We're going to make those investments in solar, in, in carbon capture, in wind that we already are making, and we're going to be the future in terms of biodiesel, bioethanol um, uh, that is going to only not only support our ag sector, but also bring us to that future that's going to be cleaner and greener so that my two girls can grow up in a cleaner world than I did. All right, uh, same question to Ms. Salvi. Yes, well, climate change is happening. It's real. However, the uh, Biden administration adherence to the Green New Deal uh, is, is actually doing more harm than good. And where we are with our energy policy, this was not inevitable. You can't transition our entire economy to uh, a green energy policy when only 12 to 15% of our economy runs on renewables. It doesn't make sense down the line, it's insane. And yet this administration and Senator Duckworth have waged a war on fossil fuels. Look at natural gas clean. I mentioned earlier that we are the Saudi Arabia of national, natural gas in our country. And yet, most recently, she has, uh, uh, you know, uh, waged war against natural gas. And I think that this is, this would be smart policy for us to pursue an all of the above energy policy. We don't simply have the uh, electrical grid to go all electric yet. You know, and, and it just doesn't make sense to be able to say, let's switch over to renewables. Let's, 
before we have the infrastructure and look at our economy, our economy is very much hurting because of it. I earlier mentioned that 40% of our state energy needs were supplied by um, our own nuclear power. But in the last two years now, we're importing 40% of our nuclear power. And I believe there's another two or three uh, power plants that are powered by clean coal due to shut down. This is just irresponsible on the part of Senator Duckworth. And uh, while I applaud doing uh, innovative research in, uh, into uh, expanding renewables, we have to also consider the economic toll. Uh, and we are not ready, not, not everybody can even afford to go EV yet, but I think that we have to work on clean energy innovation, research and continued funding, but we have to be real in, in our, our economic competitiveness because of Senator Duckworth's policies and this president's adherence to the, the gods of the Green New Deal are hurting America and making us less competitive and unsafe. And just I'll very, I'll very, very quickly, just give Senator Duckworth a chance to respond. We just keep it very brief. Well, I fought for uh, because of our dependence on foreign oil um, and everything that I have done has been to never be in a position where we're ever losing another American life because we're dependent on a foreign oil. Uh, all of the above means we support everything. Um, and I, I have actually introduced a bill uh, called the Marshall Plan for the Whole Country that we're looking at supporting coal mining. Uh, I certainly support uh, both uh, uh, natural gas, but I also think that this move towards uh, biofuels, towards nuclear, towards wind, towards solar, is an economic advantage for our state and for our country because we can sell that clean coal technology to the rest of the world. We're going to attract major multinational corporations like LG, like we already have, because they could have gone anywhere in the world, but they're coming to Illinois because we can provide them with net carbon neutral fuel. And that is why they signed the deal with ADM. They told me that specifically because I was in Taiwan talking to them. I recently was talking to Samsung, same thing. Abundant energy, net carbon neutral, that is what's going to be the econo economics of the future. Um, and we need to be making those investments now. Um, and I'm very proud that I have been the key senator protecting the renewable fuel standard for ethanol, putting in more funding for biofuels and the defense budget towards aviation biofuels, supporting both of our national laboratories, which are developing the new uses for spent nuclear fuel to make nuclear fuel more accessible. I have gotten grants to support uh, developing carbon capture sequestration technology here in Illinois. All of this work is going to deal with climate change, but also position our country and our state for that future where we are going to lead the world when it comes to clean energy towards the future where we can fix both climate change and grow our economy here, right here in Illinois with good old American grown, Illinois grown corn and soybean with innovation that is coming forward as a result of Illinois scientists and our universities, I am really excited for the future for our, for our state and for our country when it comes to our energy policy. Okay, um, unfortunately, uh, we have run out of time. And uh, uh, I do feel bad about that because there's all sorts of other issues we could get into. And I appreciate uh, um, uh, the discussion uh, today. This concludes today's interview. We do want to thank the candidates, uh, Senator Duckworth and uh, Kathy Salvi. The election is November 8th. Uh, there are also options for early voting and uh, vote by mail. Uh, uh, please also look for uh, uh, other uh, Illinois AP media editor interviews in the races for governor, secretary of state, attorney general, and on the referendum for the, the union amendment to the state constitution. Uh, good luck to both of the candidates and their campaigns. Uh, we encourage all voters to research the candidates and issues in all of the races to make use of your local newspaper and other newspapers as part of that research. Ultimately, informed voting is uh, one of our most sacred obligations as uh, citizens in a democracy. And to those of you watching, thank you for your commitment to self-government and stay well. Thank you.